Hey everybody, welcome back to DJ Tutorials. This is going to be part two of modeling a wrench in Blender. If you haven't seen part one, go and check that video out and come back here. If you haven't yet, please like and subscribe to the channel. You wouldn't believe how much it helps me out and it's super easy for you to do. Of course, if you get lost or anything like that, you can jump into the Discord server. The link is in the video description below. And if you'd like to help cover the cost of making these videos, please consider becoming a patron. That link is also below in the video description. So let's go ahead and pick up where we left off. Now, one more thing that we really need to do here is we need to start to fine tune this top edge here because as you saw from our reference material right here, it's pulled up a bit. If we zoom in, you can see that there's a little bit of depth between this handle part and the top of the head here. So what we want to do is just go to face select. You can grab all these by selecting each one or hold alt and left click all of these. Just make sure you don't have these tips selected here. Hit E to extrude. It automatically locked it on the Z and then we can just pull it up a little bit like this. We can then control this depth later, how much this sticks off by doing a couple edits. But let's leave that as it is for now. We just know that we want that there. And we know that we're going to end up wanting to clean this up a little bit more to make it a little bit more sharp or the edges to be a little bit more obvious. But what I'd like to do now is just sort of focus on the center area because this is an area that can be uh, just based on what you'd like to do with it. So I'm going to go over here to the subdivision surface modifier. I'm just going to turn that off right now. We're just going to take a look at this. And you can see that this one is this square. And the square one is a little bit easier to deal with, so I'll just show you how to do that. I'm going to hit Control R. Actually, let me save first. I'm going to hit Control R. I'm going to roll it up once to get two of these loop cuts going on and right click. Then I'm going to scale this on X, move it over to the edges like this. And you can see here that we have these two right here that we can actually use. And what we're going to do is we're going to grab all of these sections right here. We're going to scale it on Y and just set that where we want it to be for this area that's going to be indented right here. Something like that. Let's go back to solid mode. And if we grab the uh, face select or you hit three on your keyboard, hit E, you can see there with the blue line, it's locked on the Z. And we can just push that right down inside there. Now the issue is going to show up when we turn on the subdivision surface modifier. You can see that there's this funky stuff going on here. So what we'll do is we'll go into edit mode, select the edges here. Whoops, need to go on edge select. We can select these edges, hit N. You can go over here to the transform properties where it says mean crease and you can turn this up. You can see there's a little bit of a funkiness that's happening right here. And what we can do after that's been sharpened is we can actually hit control R, roll up twice and you can see the yellow outlines there, left click. Right click again to just sort of set it, S, X to lock it on the X, and then we can just push those over to the edges. And you can see that it's tightening up those sections there. The other thing that we can do to start to see these things a little bit easier is if we go over here, we can actually look at this on the cage. So if you click this little triangular thing here, it's gonna show us what the actual uh, edges are on the geometry and you can start to see where we can grab some of these or if you hold alt and left click and hold shift you can start to select some of these edges in here and then we can add a mean crease to those as well and you can start to see a really cool effect where we can actually control how much that's happening there and we can actually take these if I grab these with shift alt and left click and I hit control x to delete those what you can actually do, or to uh, dissolve them, what you can actually do is grab these edges right here, here, and here, and you can actually add a crease there too. And if we grab this one here, whoops, this one here, and this one here with shift, add a crease there, and you can see that we can control it there as well. So you don't always have to do things one way, there's all sorts of ways that you can do stuff. Now this is one way that you can deal with this, uh, you might run into a little bit of an issue though when you want to select some of these edges hit, and if you hit control B you might run into a problem with trying to bevel these out. And in that particular situation what you might want to do is just remove all of these creases here. Whoops, let's actually turn off the normals here. And we'll just select more of these here and basically just set these all back to zero for the crease. So I can show you a different way of doing this.
And what we might want to do is actually add a bevel to this or some loop cuts on the inside to set this. So if I hit Control R and I just sort of place it there, you can see that I'm kind of controlling on the inside of this, the sharpness, but it's not controlling the edges. So I'm going to Control Z to undo, Control R. I'm going to roll up once to create these edge loops here, scale these out along the X to then recreate this sort of shape here like that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold Shift and Alt and select these edges here and hit Control B and we can actually create a bevel doing this. Something like that. So there's a couple different ways that you can actually approach this and you'll want to play around with this and see which way works best for you, either adding loop cuts and controlling where those creases sort of end up. You can hit G twice to move it over as close as you can and you can kind of shift it around to get the shape you want. However, what I like is I really like this really cool circular shape here and it's a little bit more challenging to make something like this. So let's try and make something like that. Now what's really cool here is we're never really doing a whole lot of destructive stuff since we're just playing around with this. We're doing some very very basic stuff. We don't have a whole lot of geometry here. So we can actually marquee select this entire area, hit X, delete those vertices, and then we can hold Alt left click these sections here, hit F3 and type in bridge edge loops and you can see we can then just paste those areas right back together without really losing much work. Okay, And you'll find that you'll do that a lot. You'll make some mistakes, you'll want to go back and do something a little bit different. Just make sure you're using some really loose geometry, some really basic stuff to begin with, and then you won't have a whole lot of issues when you're trying to, uh, when you make a mistake or when you want to go back and recreate a section or try something different. So after we've joined those two sides together and we go back in edit mode, and let's actually turn off the subdivision surface modifier. And you can see how far these edges go here. They go all the way over here and all the way over here. So when we want to start to create that sort of circular shape in the middle, we want to sort of maintain where this is here because that's where that taper is. So let's hit Control R to add an edge loop. Let's roll up on the mouse to create this one here. Right click. So we have two of these. Scale, lock it on the X, and just move it out like this. And if we turn back on the subdivision surface modifier, you can see that it kind of moves. Uh, but it won't be too much when we start to do some other stuff. So let's hit 3 to go to face select. Select this center one here. And we're going to hit E to extrude. You can see there it's, it's already locked on the Z axis. Let's actually pull this down a little bit, just like that. Okay. And what we're going to want to do here is we're going to either, you can start to try and add some creases to sort of keep the shape. Or what we can do is start to add some more edge loops. So Control R to create this edge loop here. Roll up once on the mouse wheel left click to set that. I'm just going to right click there just to leave it where it is. And you can see that now we have some geometry. We can see this area and we can see this area here. And now you can start to play with this by, let's just select all of this here and hit N and we can start to try to add a crease here if you want. Or we can add a loop cut on the left side here and on the right side over here and then Alt, Shift, select these, and we can start to scale these out a little bit and control how the shaping of this sort of dipped section here and the curvature might look right in here. Now a really cool thing that we can do is we can Alt, Shift, select these areas here, or just select uh, Shift, select those edges, Control B to add a bevel, and you can roll up or down to create more geometry, but I'm just going to leave it like this, just with this one here. And you can see that now we're starting to create some more geometry to keep those areas nice and stable along the edge there. And of course, you can always go back into edit mode and select these. You can hit G twice and move these along, and you can see how much that's getting tightened up over there on that side. And you can also select both and then make sure that up here you have this set on median point scale along the X to lock it down and you can move that around. Just be careful that you don't accidentally fold it on itself. You can see right here that if I hit shift or uh, if I scale on X, you can see how that starts to sort of mess up the geometry. So just be careful there and set that where you want it to be. I think that looks pretty good. And I want to go ahead and grab these in here. So I'm just gonna shift select those and we can see if a mean crease will do there. We added a mean crease right there 
makes it nice and tight along the bottom and we can even add a bevel control B and we can add a bevel there as well just be careful because it will create a sharp edge in there so as long as that's what you want you can have that there but you might want to grab those and take off that mean crease just in case if it seems a little bit too much and a little bit unrealistic so then what we can do is take the same idea that we just did there and we can start to control some of this here and some of this here. But what I'm gonna do first is I'm actually gonna shade this as smooth so that we can start to see what this is gonna look like a little bit more uh, sort of in detail about how the shading will really look when we start to add some materials. So let's hit Control S to save, right click on the object, shade smooth, shade smooth, and make sure that you're in the object mode here. And what we can do is go over here to the object data properties, click on auto smooth, and it's just gonna make the top areas that are a little bit more uh, parallel based on this or flat based on this percentage or degree here, it will make those particular areas more flat. And then the areas that don't meet these criteria over here, it's gonna make it nice and smooth. So you can see that there. And then if we add, if I just, for example, if I loop select this, I add a mean crease, you can see that the top edge here is nice and flat shaded while the rest of this is round. And if you take this and you change this, you can see as I left, uh, I left click select and drag this, you can see how that is changing where the shading is. And we're just gonna put that back to 30. Remember we have the cavity uh, sort of view on here, which is gonna change some of the way that this is looking to us, just so we can see where our geometry actually is. So we can also grab this area right here and we can add a mean crease there if you want. We can add a bevel as well by hitting shift or control B and just dragging that around. You can add more geometry if you'd like, but really I'm not gonna do that because I think this looks okay as it is. You can take these edges here and you can scale these in, whoops, this one here and this one here. You can scale those in towards each other just to soften that if you'd like, if you see, if it feels to you like you need to do that. I'm gonna control Z because I really don't think it's gonna be that big of a problem. And a lot of times with machined objects like this, you might see some things like that. Now one thing you might see over here is this right here, and some of that's caused by the fact that we don't have the uh, perfect quads right here, but we can add a loop cut right here, and we can shift and pull that down, and we can tighten that up so that it looks nice and tight right along that edge there. Then over here on this side, we can select all of this section up here, which is on the top, and we can add a crease if we'd like, and we can control B to add a bevel. And I'm actually gonna roll up once to create a nice little uh, edge along there. And you can see that we're making this nice and tight and you can have a nice rounded area here or you can actually add a loop cut right here, drag it over to the right or you know, drag it towards this area here. And you can see that it makes a nice little crease right there. So again, What's really gonna help you out with this is knowing how to use your mean crease information here, adding bevels to control it and making sure that when you created your original topology that it was, you were paying attention to that edge information, that edge flow, okay? That's gonna be really crucial to making sure that you can do this easily. So that if you needed to add something like a crease along this side here, you can hit control R, add one here and then pull this down you get a nice crease right along there if that's what you wanted. And we can always take that, hit control X to dissolve that and just sort of change the geometry however makes sense to what it is that we want it to look like. And make sure you're also checking your reference as well. I'm not gonna make this 100% perfect exactly like both of them because they're a little bit different. But I think in general, you guys are understanding the idea here behind what I'm doing. So now that we have that out of the way, we can start to just take a look at some of the other things that we got going on here and make sure that we have everything put together before we put the text right in here. If I hit tab to go into edit select and I go in here, it looks like this section is actually not all the way down to the bottom. So I can grab that, lock it on Z, pull it down. And if I have the clipping on right here, you can see that it's merged together and we have a nice little a hole that goes all the way down to the bottom. And if you wanted to, you could sharpen these up by selecting these areas here and adding a mean crease like this. And if you wanted to maybe create a little bit of a problem, you could add some bevel here. If we take away that mean crease and we add a bevel, you might wanna try that. If we take this 
and we add a bevel here instead, and then we sort of take some of these and we add a bevel. You could sharpen these areas up like I just did right there. You could see that. But I don't particularly think that that really adds a lot for this particular project. I'm just trying to show you how to do this rather quickly. But again, you could add some mean creases in here. And of course, if you're the kind of person who wants to use modifiers instead of adding bevels for the geometry, I could take this up here. I could take this mean bevel weight right here and move it all the way up to one. Add modifier, bevel, and down here, you can see where it says limit method. I can change this to weight, and then you can control the amount of the bevel here, just like this. So as with anything, it's really up to you how you want to do that. Just make sure that if you're using this method, you pay attention to where you're placing the bevel along your modifier uh, hierarchy over here. If you put it here, for example, you might not have the same effect, just like if you put it above the subdivision surface modifier, you see that you get a different effect there. So just be a little bit careful with where you place this and make sure that you're placing that exactly where you want it to be. You can change the number of segments here, but I really think that this has a nice little look to it when you just have the one segment. It looks a lot more like it's been machined that way. And again, we can just grab this if we wanted to, add a bevel weight here. Just be aware that when you're starting to add bevel weights to everything, it's limited based on the maximum amount of space from that particular loop or object where you've added, or edge where you've added that bevel weight. And this amount here is going to be based on the most amount that your smallest area will be able to bevel. If you don't know what I'm talking about, start to add bevels to everything and you'll really quickly understand what I'm talking about. Okay. So I'm just going to take that off there because I think that it's fine just like that. And I might just grab this particular loop here. Let's see if I might want to add it there. Mm, no. Maybe a crease. And let's add a little bit more subdivision. So let's put a four there. And you, you might want to be careful with how many subdivisions you put on because you might have an issue if you go too high and your computer can't handle it. But three or four should be just fine. When you go to render, just make sure that you set this to a four instead of um, uh, because your viewport's at four and this renders at two. Or you can just know that you're going to want to render in four and leave the viewport at two so that you're seeing it as a faster viewport speed. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and add some text. So I'm going to hit Shift A to add. We're going to go to where it says text. And there you can see text. And we'll go to the text information over here. And go to right here where it says regular. We're just going to change this one. And I know that I like Magneto. So make sure that you go to wherever the location is that you have your fonts saved. I'm going to click this Magneto one here. You can see how fun that looks. And I'm going to do all caps, DJ, tutorials, obviously, because uh, only cool people make sure that they put DJ tutorials on their tools. Or maybe DJ tutorials is a tool. I don't know. Um, and then we move this over here like this. And try to sort of, I'm just going to eyeball this a little bit here to make sure it's nice and even. We're going to grab it on the Z here just to move it above. And we're going to go to where it says geometry on the right. We're going to hold shift to extrude. You can see we get a really nice little extrusion there. Grab it on the Z. I'm just going to put it right underneath where the top of this edge is here. So I'm just going to put it right underneath there. And then we're also going to add a little bit of a bevel. So if we go to bevel here, we can take the depth, hold shift, left click, and we can add a little bit of a bevel. And because I like how it looks, I'm going to put this down to like a one or a two just to make that really cool sort of like machined edge look to the edges of this. And the beveling and your extrusion is really going to be dependent a little bit on the, t the type of font that you use. So just keep that in mind when you create this. And for the resolution here, you might want to increase or decrease this depending on what you have. So you can see there, if I go too low, it starts to look really blocky. Maybe that's what you want. I am not sure. Let's just put this back up. We'll just leave it at 12 because the default's fine. And sometimes you might want to uh, do some other things with this. We're just going to leave it as text. And we're going to do a really cool trick to make this look integrated with the wrench. So uh, you can just leave this as text right now. And next time we will add some really cool materials. That's going to be it for this part. Hopefully you're able to follow along with me. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to place them in the comment section below. And make sure that you're subscribed so that you can see when the next video is released. And I will see you all next time.